determine who goes first by rolling a die. The highest roller will be the first player. And turn order should go clockwise. Take a special note who the last player is. Remove all the ruler card types, then set them aside. Next, remove each of the following. Heavy Cavalry, Heavy Infantry, Battleship, Frigate, and Light Battleship. Place these off to the side in a different pile for now. Deal each player 10 cards. They select 7 to keep and return the rest to the dealer. Now hand the ruler cards to the last player. They select one ruler and pass the ruler deck to the player in his or her right. Each player does the same until everyone has selected one ruler. Each player is given a card holder and a capital city card to place in front of them as shown. All the remaining cards are shuffled together to make up the master draw deck. The first player has a responsibility to move the time token to the right at the very beginning of their turn. In a non-player elimination game, it's moved two spaces at the very beginning of the first player's turn. Otherwise, it's moved only one. Now the last player picks a state to place his or her ruler in Capital City on. Place both tokens that represent those cards in the same state. The phase order is printed on the board. It begins by reducing the resource pool to zero. The first round, you'll have no resources. Next, collect resources. Each state has a number printed on it. Add all, up all the states you control. The first round, there will only be the state that has your capital city on it. Pay maintenance. Most of the cards you will have in play will have a maintenance cost to keep that card in play. The only exception to this is you do not have to pay the maintenance cost on the ruler you have in the king or queen position. Playing cards. Each card in your hand has an initial cost. Subtract the initial cost from the resource points you have left after paying your maintenances. You may play as many cards as you can afford with a maximum of six units. Now take the corresponding unit token and place it on a state that you control or have permission to place due to negotiation. Place your card into the card holder so that it covers the IC. Now you have a unit in play. You may move any units you control and move them as many spaces as a card has movement points. Some units move on water as well as land. They may only enter water through a port. Some units may only move on water. These ships must be spawned on states with ports. Ports are the only states that ships can occupy. Also, think of ports as doors, not separate spaces. Some cards are considered flag carriers. When a flag carrier moves through a state, it leaves behind a control token, as long as an opponent's flag carrier doesn't occupy the same state. Limited flag carriers can leave behind control tokens only if there's not already a control token present on that state. When a unit passes through a state occupied by an opponent's unit, that movement is paused and both players look at each other's card in question. If both cards are military units, that unit's movement is ended for that turn. The player is free to continue moving his or her other units. All movement must be concluded before attacks are made. When making an attack, a player declares a primary attacker, secondary attacker, and so on. Next, the defender will choose which one of their units defends against which one of the attacker's units. A state must be defended if there is an eligible defender. Each attacking unit must have a defender if possible. Each player rolls a die and adds the unit's combat value and bonuses to the die roll. The high score wins. The losing unit gets put on the bottom of the deck. It is important to note that if a unit says can't be attacked by a specific type of unit, it's not an eligible defender against that unit. Also, if there are more defenders than there are attackers, the defender may assign two defenders to one attacker. For example, the primary defender, Light Cavalry, loses, but the secondary defender, Infantry, gets a free hit on the attacker. 
this double team doesn't work for the attackers. The extra attacker must wait until the first attack resolves. A player may attack as many times as they want in one turn, but once they attack, his or her movement phase is over. Also, don't forget, the defender chooses which unit or units defend against which attacker, but all attackers must be assigned a defender if possible. Assassins are the only exception to this rule, and Assassin gets to choose its defender in combat. Attacking the capital. All the eligible defenders must be eliminated before you can attack the capital. For example, a capital will never be a secondary defender. A separate attack is launched on the capital, and only a flag carrier can attack the capital city itself. When a capital is defeated, you will flip the card over. It's now considered a capital city under siege. And during the empty resource phase of your turn, you must also remove control token from a state you control. And all the units lose flag carry ability. This will also happen if you not have a ruler in the king or queen position. Now you can always pay to restore your capital, and if you have a ruler in play, you can always promote them too. In a player elimination game, the capital city can be attacked a second time. At that point, if it loses, the player will be eliminated. Note, you always will be able to claim resources from the capital state. Now, toward the end of every player's turn, you'll get to draw a card. You'll get to draw an additional card for every three resource points they'd like to spend in this way. But at the very end of their turn, they must discard back down to seven cards. King Spoils Track. At the very start of the first player's turn, they move the time token to the right. They move it two spaces in the non-player elimination version, one space in the player elimination version. If ever a player is eliminated from the game, the time counter now moves two spaces. When a player removes an opponent's capital city, they place one of their control tokens on the King Spoils track. This token goes on the same location as the time token is currently on. The player gets all the bonuses associated with that space on every subsequent turn. Now the game is over when the time token leaves the last position on the track. All resources from states and bonuses are counted. The player with the highest score wins. In the case of a player elimination game, the player that has removed the most of their opponents is the winner. In the case of a tie, the resource points are compared and the player with the highest point total value wins. Thank you for watching, and I hope you like playing Siege of Verdan.
Attacking the capital city is a little bit different also. You have to clear the state out of eligible defenders first. Run all those dice rolls, clear those guys out, and then launch a separate new attack on the capital city. Once you've defeated the capital city, you flip that card over and it becomes capital city under siege. The combat value goes down, becomes easier to defeat, but you've got to win that second dice roll. Once you defeat the capital city under siege, that player has lost the game. Next, I'm going to do a quick review of the cards. A flag carrier is someone who gets to drop control tokens on every state that it passes through, as long as you're not an opponent's flag carrier present. A limited flag carrier gets to drop the control tokens if there's no other control tokens on that state. MV is movement, how many spaces you can move. IC is initial cost, how much you're going to pay to get that card into play. CV is combat value, that's the number you add to your combat roll. And MC is maintenance cost. This is what you have to pay that card to keep it into play. Special card abilities. This one's the assassin, for example. The assassin gets to pick its defender. So in essence, it attacks a specific card, not a state. Merchants have the ability to give you some extra resources, collected during your resource phase. And also gives you negotiation. Negotiation allows you to trade points back and forth between two different players. And also lets you spawn your cards on their states if they allow you to. Now some cards allow you to travel on water, but you've got to leave land through a port to do that. Other cards like ships have to be spawned on states or water outside of states with port. Okay, let's talk about the King Spoils track next. It's the first player's responsibility to move the time token one space to the right on the beginning of their turn. Once a player has been eliminated, any player has been eliminated, it moves twice as fast. It moves two spaces to the right on that first player's turn. Now don't forget, if you're the player that removes another player from the game, you get to take their control token, place it on the King Spoils track the turn that that happened, and you get those spoils at the beginning of your turn on every one of your turns from now on. Okay, let's talk about the non-player elimination version. Essentially, you don't get to wage that last attack on a capital city under siege. It'll never go out of play. The King Spoils track moves twice every turn instead of just once, and the player with the most resources wins when the King Spoils track leaves the last space. As always, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy playing Siege of Redan.